Okay, thank you so much, Louisa, for the introduction. Um, it's a real pleasure to join this panel and talk about quite an important topic. Um, the presentation that I will share is focused on the issue of women's safety and health as it relates to access to water supply, not only for domestic purposes, such as drinking, washing, um, bathing, cooking, but also productive activities with water. So this study draws on data collected in rural Tanzania and Burkina Faso. Uh, the study took place, began, it began in 2013 with some in-depth scoping work, which we will describe, and then ended with um, a rather large household survey. So I also want to acknowledge the many collaborators um, involved with this work listed here at the bottom of the slide from Winrock International, Virginia Tech, Florida International University, and the GLOWS Consortium. And this study was co-funded by USAID and uh, internally here at AILBOG. This work is embedded within a larger study examining multiple use water services, or MUS. Um, a quick background on MUS. Uh, in this case, MUS is defined as an integrated water service delivery approach that takes domestic and productive uses of water into account throughout planning, financing, and management. Um, we were interested in the possible benefits derived from such a comprehensive approach. It's not so much business as usual, although things are changing a bit under uh, SDG 6.1. But um, it's very much quite, a, quite a, a rounded and comprehensive approach to delivering water. Um, besides the livelihoods impacts, there are other impacts such as uh, the day-to-day -day existence of women's safety and security. Um, this comes along with water being available closer to the home and also more reliably. And so in this two-country study of MUS, we have uh, the eyewash program in Tanzania and the Wawash program in Burkina Faso. Both projects um, greatly improved access in terms of attributes such as the volume available, the distance to the source, the reliability of the source. And in terms of technologies, you see here in eyewash, um, systems were mainly piped networks, and then in Wawash we had point sources, upgraded wells located close to the home and to the garden and other places where water was needed. Here are just a few um, examples of what productive activities with water look like in these programs. In Burkina Faso, we have improved access to water supported um, not only domestic needs, but also shea butter production, dolo brewing, and vegetable gardens. In Tanzania, common activities were slightly different. There were also gardens, but a heavier emphasis it seemed on animal husbandry, as well as microenterprises such as preparing um, and selling foods. Improving livelihoods diversity was a central focus, but um, today we're talking about also impacts on women's security. Um, it's well documented that the vast majority of rural population in Sub-Saharan Africa collects water some distance from the home, amounting to a huge uh, time and labor burden for women and children, especially young girls. In the policy world, this issue is typically examined in terms of quantitative me measures like linear distance, time spent walking to the source, and standing in queue also caloric expenditure and opportunity costs due to the inability to take a job or attend school. Less examined, however, are issues closely linked to morbidity and mortality, such as the danger of vehicle collisions when walking on um, roads or paths leading to the source, incidences of violence, especially when water collection must be done in either the early, very early morning or at night, um, and also injuries to the neck and back due to carrying heavy loads. So we focused on these so-called neglected concerns um, in this study, asking to what extent the MUS projects reduced incidences of assault or injuries for those responsible for water collection. Data was gathered from a variety of sources. We had uh, 
2,700 household surveys, um, over 40 community meetings, as well as key informant interviews. And then um, really the heart of this study on this particular question comes from eight focus group discussions held in Burkina Faso. In terms of the household survey, uh, we were very interested in looking systematically at differences between MUS communities and neighboring communities that had not been enrolled into the MUS program, but could be considered similar to the MUS communities at baseline in terms of um, the population, access to resources. So um, what I want to highlight here is simply that Communities actually also have differences uh, within, there's differences across MUS and non-MUS, but also within the MUS communities themselves. We saw differing levels of access in terms of those who engaged with the program, we call them investors, neighbors who shared with these investors, but perhaps did not um, directly engage with the program, and non-neighbors we define as people uh, well outside of the program activities. Today, we just draw a basic comparison across uh, MUS versus non-MUS, but um, I just want to highlight that future work should also consider differences within communities. Our focus group discussions in Burkina Faso revealed many issues that women faced prior to receiving a protected well near the home. These issues are highlighted here in red. However, there's many, many more that were mentioned, and I just draw uh, some examples here. In every focus group, uh, respondents identified incidences of children falling into open wells and tragically dying as a result. Um, this, we didn't expect to hear about this so often, and it really, in this context, was probably the greatest fear as well as the greatest benefit once the MUS program protected the wells, covered them, um, and, and could allow children to walk around without such accidents happening. Chronic neck and back pains were commonly experienced, especially in the dry season. And one focus group described a fear of snakes, um, snake bites prior to unimproved wells being upgraded because a rope and bucket system was being used and uh, this actually presented quite a danger. In terms of personal safety while walking to the source, um, one woman described, we do not fear men walking to get water, but we do fear fast motorcycles that could hit us along the path. And finally, several study participants mentioned the serious risk of wells caving in on people while uh, these wells were being dug deeper, um, especially in dry months. The household survey was uh, also asked households whether the person responsible for water collection in the home had experienced any type of injury. Because of the nature of a household survey, it's uh, designed to be a standardized question. We really could not dig deeper into this question, um, and the question was really geared just around general injury. The incidences of these types of injuries was uh, found to be lower in MUS rather than control communities. And this difference was more uh, distinct in eyewash communities in Tanzania, with eyewash um, uh, survey participants reporting just a 3% rate, 3% of participants mentioned having experienced an injury in the past year versus 12% in control. Then what we show here is a model that controls for other factors that can influence women's safety and well-being. We found that the odds of injury during water fetching was over four times less in eyewash as compared to control uh, communities. And the risk of injury in Burkina Faso is also found to be lower um, according to model results, but it, this, uh, this statistic um, uh, is not, this finding is not statistically significant. So from this study, we can conclude that there are indeed many impacts to the well-being um, of women and children well beyond measures such as distance walked or time spent. And the issues identified in Burkina Faso really um, 
emphasized back and neck injuries as well as the risk of children falling into wells. And as uh, somewhat surprisingly, this risk of collapsed wells um, because of the need to dig deeper often. Survey data revealed a significant reduction in the risk of injury in eyewash communities, but uh, we did not find the same, uh, the same thing in Burkina Faso. I think it's also very important to step back and um, examine the data. We noticed that the risks mentioned varied greatly depending on the context. So it's a bit hard to generalize, but in general, we can say the benefits of um, improved access to water closer to the home, covered, protected, and more reliable generally confer benefits of many types. So with that, I would like to thank our many, many partners here. Um, thank you all for listening, and especially thanks to the study participants for their time and willingness to talk about uh, a topic that can be actually very difficult to um, explore. <laughs>